We are in Hollywood, California. Welcome to the 8th Annual Artivist Film Festival, hosted by our community partner, Petrobras. Since 2003, the Artivist Film Festival has raised awareness for humanity, animals, and the environment through informative and inspiring films. Now, this year, they're going to screen more than 41 films from all over the world. I'm Brooke Christopher. Join me as we interview some of the festival attendees. I am standing here with Caitlin Summerill, the director of Shed No Tears, a very important film about child trafficking. Please tell us about the process you went through in making this film. Uh, sure. About four or so years ago, we started a nonprofit called uh, Unseen Stories, and the purpose of that was to uh, bring to light uh, issues of injustice around the world. And so we chose child trafficking in Benin, West Africa, and went there between 2007 and 2008. And we worked for uh, six months filming there, and we got 45 or so inter interviews, 90 hours of footage and brought it back here and uh, now screening it around the country to raise awareness about the issue. Now you decided to do it from the victim's perspective. Uh, tell us about that. Uh, I felt that the having the perspective of the children would be uh, impactful, that we could relate to, many of us either have children or no children or were aunts or uncles and we could relate well with a child um, and what they would be going through in that sort of situation. So I felt that it would be impactful, but then also to draw in um, supporting stories from people that had rescued them, from former traffickers to sort of round out the, the story. Um, so how can people get involved? Someone like me who didn't know about this issue, who did not know that, you know, there's modern day slavery happening, you know, right before our, our very eyes. Um, how can I get involved? Uh, I would say for just the average person, if you don't want to get involved with Unseen Stories, uh, there are organizations all across the U.S. and all around the world that are working on human trafficking issues. For Unseen Stories, it's unseenstories.com. We are on Facebook, we're on Twitter, uh, and we do a scholarship program where uh, someone can pay, donate 20, or excuse me, $55 for one year and that provides a, a formerly trafficked child that we know uh, um, uh, tuition and a uniform and books and all that sort of stuff so that they are in school instead of being trafficked out. So. Now, what do you think uh, is the most important thing um, around childhood trafficking? What is the, the biggest issue that people need to be looking at? Mm, biggest issue, wow. Um, I mean, the biggest issue and the biggest cause is poverty. And so um, if there are ways that people can get involved with addressing poverty, hunger, homelessness, and that sort of thing, uh, I think that's the biggest issue. And yeah. So personally, Caitlin, are you, do you have an investment in this cause? I mean, why this cause? Oh, I definitely have an investment. It was a labor of love. Um, you know, we started Unseen Stories four years ago, and that was with two of my partners, and uh, now I'm the director of the foundation. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a labor of love. It's a volunteer position for me, so I'm um, just doing all I can to um, show that child trafficking is a problem. It's a passion of mine that, I don't know, I couldn't walk away from. You know, you, you film the stories of those kids and you can't walk away from them. So one more time, the website for Unseen Stories? It's www.unseenstories.com. Thank you so much, Caitlin. Thanks. It was really exciting. Uh, we actually were very fortunate to be embraced by Artivist. Um, coming from Indiana and being new to California, this was just an amazing welcoming. And uh, to be able to be with so many other great films and just films that matter and films that mean something and are trying to change the world, we're just really happy to be a part of that. So tell us more about the body of Christ. Uh, well, it just became this living, breathing thing. We went through a lot of uh, trials with it. It was really hard to get the funding and really hard to get people to really want to watch the film because it's kind of about a touchy subject with religion and sexuality. But we always just endeared to the fact that we weren't making a gay film. We were making a film about two people in love who happened to be two men. And that's kind of the principle we shot with. And I'm just so thrilled to be representing my cast and my crew, and I love them all very much. Now, is this issue, uh, do you have a personal investment um, with this, this issue well, of religion and sexuality? Um, a lot of really key people in my life are um, 
openly gay couples, and which I just think is amazing and beautiful. Uh, a couple that has been together longer than I've been alive is a huge influence in my life. Um, actually, as like a heterosexual male, it's a really weird subject to touch on, but and it's really caused a lot of like weird uh, looks from my family and. None of my family's even seen the film yet, <laughs> so that's kind of just been interesting. But um, I think as long as people just keep an open mind and I can just keep doing films that matter to me and have uh, something to say about the world we live in, then that's really all that matters. So what's next for you, Derek? <laughs> Actually, um, I'm developing a feature with Beacon Pictures. Uh, it's kind of like an end of the world, like hangover meets bucket list type thing. And I've actually just been hired to write the first draft of that. So hopefully they like it enough to green light it and we'll be hearing more about it. Well, congratulations. We hope to see more from you. And congratulations again. Thank you very much. It was great being here. Thanks for taking the time.